Okay, everybody, in the past 12 months, I've been to Dubai, Greece, Italy, Spain. I've been back to America. I've been to Mexico, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru. Currently, at the time of this recording, I am in the beautiful city of Santiago, Chile. And of all the places I've been this year and in other years, I'm not on vacation. We're working hard around here. There's a lot to do. And in this video, I want to walk you through my mobile setup. I want to talk to you about my computer, the screens that I'm using. We'll go through all the different accessories that I have, why I'm using those ones. And then I'm going to end the video with some pro tips. So when you're out there traveling the world, you can use these as well. And we can take a look at what my setup looks like. It's made up of a PC with two additional screens. Let's walk through it. Okay, let's break this down starting with the actual PC. This computer is a Dell XPS. So a couple cool things about this, and I've tried a lot of computers over the years. This has been a fantastic machine. The Dell XPS, uh, I maybe all of them, or maybe it's just this one, I don't know. They have a infinity screen that goes around. And what this means is you have the footprint of a 15 inch laptop, but the screen space of a 17 inch. And the reason being is if you look at your laptop, there's a bevel around the top of it, like this black bar that goes all the way around. This doesn't have it. it they have an infinity screen, which pushes everything right to the edge. And so you get a smaller laptop footprint with a bit larger screen, which is a pretty cool feature, especially for traveling. This XPS I built right from the website and I was able to talk to somebody there and they walked me through how to spec it out and they were very helpful. It's been a great machine. Um, this computer has the ability to play games like Elden Ring. It obviously handles the workload. But even this is the computer that I use when I'm home and I'm not traveling. So at my house back in the States, in Connecticut, I have in my home office two very large monitors. And if you've ever seen a video where maybe those are in the background, those are all powered from this laptop, uh, which a lot of people find surprising. They think that I, there's an actual desktop computer running that, but it's just this. So this Dell XPS has been great. The actual specs of this, I'm not exactly sure, but if you were to build one out or, or go to the website, you can you know, do it for whatever you need. Now, we live in a world where being able to video chat is really important, especially when you're on the road. It's good to see people and to catch up, if not for work, if for personal. And for that, I'm using the Elgato face cam. Now, uh, this is the first web camera that I've ever used. Before this, I was traveling with an actual DSLR. It was a Sony A something or another, and the video on that was very, very nice. I've downsized because the, the way I travel now, I fit everything into one carry-on bag. Um, I don't have a personal item. I don't check in any luggage. Just one hands-free bag that fits all my work stuff. It fits all my clothes, all my personal stuff. And if you want me to make a video about that, I will. I'll break it down. Um, it's really a, a modern feat of engineering to fit everything into one bag. So let me know if you guys want to see that. I'll break a video. But to downsize things, I switched over to a web camera. And I can tell you this, I don't know if I can give a good review on this or a fair review, I should say, because the only thing I can really can compare it to is that, the, that Sony I was using. And this is real bang average compared to that. It is incredibly better than the web camera that comes on the computer. Um, but as far as web cameras go, I think this might just be real bang average. Maybe it's amazing. I don't actually know, but it's not as good as a, it's not as good as a Sony a whatever, uh, I have. Okay. <laughs> now the other pieces that make up this setup are my mouse. And this might be surprising. The fact that I'm using a full on sized mouse here. This is a Logitech G903 SE. And not only is it a full size mouse, not like a compact one, it's also cord, which creates an extra thing you have to travel with. But the reason being, like I said back at the beginning, I'm not traveling for pleasure. I'm not traveling and I just need to send out a few emails. Um, there's a lot of work to do. And I have to spend a lot of time working. And so for this, I can't use the trackpad on my computer. I need an actual mouse. I don't want to be in a little tiny setup. I want to have you know, desk space. I want to have a full size mouse. These things are important to the workflow. And so for those reasons, I travel with a full mouse and I travel with a corded mouse. This is actually wireless, but I don't use the wireless feature. I always keep it plugged in because I don't ever want to be somewhere in a country where I don't really know where stuff is and then have to worry about getting batteries. And I don't ever want to have that as a hassle. So I just keep a corded mouse. I keep it plugged in and that's how I travel. with it. Another thing that uh, I do is I travel with a microphone and before I was using 
the microphones I have now, I, I was actually traveling with a full-size microphone. Again, a lot of video chats, a lot of communication that needs to happen, and just using the speakers in your computer has some real limits. And so downsizing from a full microphone, I started to use this uh, Rode Wireless Go 2, and these have been really special. They have the ability to where you can record audio and use them as a recording device, and you can turn that recording feature off and just use it as a microphone. And so it has the receiver, and then it has two of these. Very small, very portable, they work really well, and I can use this as my microphone for a video like this or for any video uh, Zoom call that I'm on or, or anything like that. Really, it was really nice to be able to downsize and just use these. They take up almost no space, and they're, they, uh, they work really well. A couple other things that I travel with here, I use blue light blocking glasses when I'm traveling. And I, actually, I'm using these always now. And these glasses are actually sunglasses as well. So they darken up into sunglasses and then they're more clear when you're inside. And they are blue light blocking. So for traveling, you don't have to have two different pairs of glasses, one for, one for your sunglasses, one for working. This just does everything, which is pretty nice. And I don't think that this is my perfect pair of glasses but they've really been helpful to be able to work as sunglasses and then also to be able to work for um, blue light blocking. And I find that to be really important now. So I travel with these. And as a side note, I went through a long time without using a pair of sunglasses. And I actually used to think I don't like sunglasses. And I found that it was the, uh, every pair I'd ever tried were very dark. And something about being really dark with the glasses, I don't like. And when I, finally was exposed to a pair of sunglasses that had a very light tint, um, I found that that's what I enjoy. I say that because if you're out there listening to this video, and maybe you think, I don't like sunglasses, and you might think, Corbs, nobody thinks that. Maybe it was just me. But maybe try a lighter pair of glasses and you might be very happy. Before we get into uh, behind the, sc the, the screens and my screens, maybe the last thing I have here, I travel with a wireless Bluetooth speaker. And if you are traveling, I would say this is something not to skip on. This is not something to sleep on because the ability to just fill the space you're in with sound, high quality sound, and not have to do it through your device, not have to do it through headphones all the time. This is a major quality of life improvement. And this is a Bose uh, Sound Flex something or another, which is really great, except this freaking thing has such a hard time just standing up on its own. If I push it to the front, you can see it's, it's pretty stable. If I go to push it to the back, it just falls. It's very wobbly. It's like not front heavy, it's back heavy. And I cannot tell you, I have dropped this thing like 20 times because it, it, it just rocking something or just giving it a little <laughs> imbalance pushes it over. I find that extremely frustrating. Other than that, though, this has been really, really fantastic. Uh, the last thing we have in the front here would be the screens. Now, for these screens, uh, this is, these, are, these are portable screens that clip onto the actual computer. So they clip onto your, your laptop and then they, they spread out and they just fold up when you're, when you're not using them. Super convenient if you need multiple monitors like I do. Um, they're very thin. This brand that I'm using, I don't really know what the brand is, and the reason I picked these screens were, one, I need these for work. So the, the software that I'm doing is pretty low in terms of video quality. Like I, I don't need high quality screens to run these charts. These ones were 15 inches plus. Almost all the other ones I was seeing were 13 inches or 11 inches. I couldn't find ones that were any larger except for this brand. I got them just on Amazon and these were 15, like, I don't know, like 0.6 or something inches. And I wanted that extra screen space. And as you can see, uh, and as you probably saw, I have a lot of things to fill up on here. So it's really important that I had that extra screen space. That's why I went with this brand. So they've been great. I've had these for probably seven or eight months now, and I've never had any issue with them. Um, again, I don't even know what the brand is for them, but there's a lot of companies that do this, and this is a, a really cool feature where you don't have to just be with one screen, and there's a lot of companies now that do this. Really, really great for travel. I think that's it from the front of the screen, so why don't we jump to the back. I'll show you how everything's connected, and then we'll talk through, these will be some of the pro tips you need when you're out traveling yourself. Okay, I really hate to show you what's going on behind here because cord management drives me crazy, and I hate to see this looking sloppy, but this is what we got. <laughs> okay, everything is connected. I have a adapter here that plugs right into my computer through a 
I guess, a USB-C port or a uh, lightning adapter deal. With this, I have plugged in a power source. So this plugs right into and it draws power. Um, I also plug in my Elgato face cam, which will be here. My receiver that goes for the, the uh, speaker. I plug in my mouse, which goes into here. So all those things are plugged right into this. And I travel with a backup one of these. I also travel with an extension cord. This extension cord will go all the way through and plug into the wall. And I find it really important to be able to uh, not have to plug into the wall, but be able to pull this and, and kind of set up a workstation a little bit away. This cord is one that I actually picked up in Mexico City just as like a hold me over, and I haven't updated it since, but I need to have a new cord because I, I hate, I kind of hate this one, but it's just the one that I have everything plugged into right now. And I travel with two of these. Uh, this is a universal power adapter, and it'll be very important uh, to get yourself a couple of these, and you don't want to skimp. This brand, as you can see, I think is called Solaris. This has been an excellent one. I think these are like maybe $60 each. And as I just said, you don't want to skimp out. I've gotten cheap at power adapters before, and I've had them burn out on me. And if you're ever working and you burn out, you can't have access to power, and then you have to stop everything you're doing and try to find it, it's just an absolute disaster. So don't skimp on these. Spend, you know, $60 plus and get yourself some good ones. I travel with two, and those work for all of my needs. And again, these are universal, so you can, you can wherever you're at, you can just plug in and tap into the power there. So that's everything that's happening behind the screens, except for, uh, oh, you can also see how these are, these are all just plugged right into my laptop as well. So my monitors plug into my laptop, my power plugs into my laptop, and then this adapter plugs into my laptop. Now, one thing you'll notice as well is I travel with an actual ethernet cord that plugs in right to the internet. And I got to tell you, this is a, a pro tip. When you are uh, out traveling, the reason why I take an ethernet cord with me is a lot of times you'll find the um, internet is very good somewhere. Like the internet might be 100 megabytes per second, but the Wi-Fi is very bad because the actual hardware is just bad quality. They have cheap hardware. As an example of this, one time the, when we were in Quito, the internet was like 10 megabytes per second using Wi-Fi. It was horrible. And if you plugged directly in, it immediately jumped you up to over 80. It's quite common for there to be good internet all around the world or most places. But sometimes the equipment there is bad and it makes your internet almost useless. So by traveling with a ethernet, you can plug directly in. And depending on how important your work is, it's good to be plugged in anyway. But you can also access faster speeds typically if you can get yourself plugged in. So I always travel with an ethernet cord as well. Okay, everybody, that's going to wrap it up for my mobile setup tour. Thanks for sticking with me in this video. If you guys want more videos on traveling or how I'm picking locations or packing or just anything about, I guess, life on the road, let me know. Because I've probably forgotten more about traveling the world than uh, most people are ever going to know. Let me know. I can put those into additional videos. And I'll see you guys on the next one.